now that we have covered the basics of designing a wave contact lens, we're going to go over some of the troubleshooting techniques and some of the finer points of wave. So here I have a basic wave design. This one is a freeform lens. And we'll say, for example, that we put this lens on the patient's eye and we noticed we had a loose periphery to the lens. It was uh, maybe some central touch. The lens was a bit unstable. So we want to tighten up the periphery. So we can look at that as this alignment area of the contact lens is our peripheral alignment. So if we want to improve alignment here and get off the central cornea a little bit more, all we need to do is either grab and drag the blue dot down or click the blue dot down. And you see as we do that, it will raise the apex of the contact lens slightly and align the periphery. We can drag it more or less depending on what you see at the slit lamp and what you see as uh, would be helpful for the contact lens. So there are three control points we have here. If we look at the red control point, that's going to be again our optic zone. The blue is going to control our intermediate curves and the pink controls the edge. The black is the bevel lift, so that's the final bevel cut of the contact lens. If we wanted to steepen the central curve, we would just drag the red dot down. If we wanted to flatten it, we would drag it up. Same controls work on the blue dot. If we want to steepen the mid peripheral curve, so that's going to steepen just to the left of the blue dot, we drag it down. If we want to flatten them, we can drag it up. And if we're dealing with edge lift, we want to decrease edge lift. We can drag the pink dot down. And conversely, if the edge looked tight, we can drag the pink dot up. And that's how we can control and adjust the back curvature of the contact lens. So now that we've covered the basics of adjusting curvature on the back surface of the contact lens, we'll look at some of the more common adjustments you might need to make. Let's say, for example, we put this lens on the patient's eye and had some inferior edge lift. We could simply come down to the inferior portion. Because this design is freeform, we'll be able to control specifically that one quadrant. Remember, if this were a GSIM design, any change we do inferior would also affect the superior portion of the lens. I'm going to leave it in free form for this example. Let's simply change this to 50% because 50% will blend our change more rather than making it more of a sharp change. And if I'm dealing with edge lift, I usually click down at the blue dot and the pink dot. So I'll pull this down a little more and then the pink dot even further. A good method to judge the amount of change you've made is the overall sag value of the lens or the apical clearance. So if we started out with an apical clearance of 1 or 0, now it's at 11, this change we made here is effectively increasing the depth of the lens to decrease the edge lift about 11 microns. So that's not a drastic change by any means, but it's enough if you notice just a little bit of lift down there, pulling that down should tuck it in and help. Another common issue you might see is the lens being too flat along the steep meridian. This is a unique cornea we pulled up here. It's an against the rule cylinder. So if that were the case here, we'd be a little bit loose along the horizontal. So we can just come along the horizontal. And if it's a peripheral alignment, I usually do most of the control change at the blue dot and a little bit at the pink dot. And since we're in free form, we'll want to go to both sides and do the same adjustment. Now the lens is steeper along the steeper meridian and remain the same alignment along. Now let's say, for example, we put the lens on and it's too flat overall. We want to tighten up the entire lens. Easiest way to do that is to click down or drag down each dot. So the red dot, if I drag it down, is going to adjust the central base curve. So you'll notice currently the curvature is a 747. If I drag it down, change it to a 742. And then I can just follow suit out towards the periphery of this lens. And a nice way to judge that change is you should have a nice even slope without too many jumps in there. 
and that will give you a steeper lens, probably the equivalent of steepening up the lens about a quarter diopter. And if you have the opposite change needed where the overall lens looked too snug and you wanted to loosen it, you would simply drag up from the red dot and the blue dot and the pink dot. That will effectively flatten the lens the same amount. And you should follow the same approach. We should have a nice even line, so not one area of jump of clearance out here if you're looking for a smooth steepening or flattening of that lens. Now we're going to take a moment to discuss the over-refraction box. If we select the over-refraction box, this opens up, and you'll see a grayed out value up top. Currently it reads plus a quarter and minus a half x is 139. That's the empirical over-refraction based on the cross-cylinder calculation between the spectacle Rx as it's entered in comparison to the corneal K values. So you'll notice here we have 1.86 diopters, x is 95, and the spectacle Rx has two diopters of the cylinder, x is 105. As an example, if I were to change this to match the K readings at 95 and hit continue. Now when I select the over refraction, you'll notice it's plano. So it's good to note that is there. The times where that will be of more value is when we have a lot of residual cylinder that's not on the cornea and that you may need to enter beforehand on your initial lens. But if the spectacle RX cylinder and the corneal cylinder are a close match, you will not want to use that value to begin with. At this point, let's say we put this lens on the patient's eye and we do get an over-refraction. So it's plus a half minus one axis 90. Simply hit the over-refraction box and enter your over-refraction using the drop-down menu. You'll notice when we enter cylinder, the prism box is checked by default. You have the option of adding prism to help with orientation and rotation, or uncheck it and no prism will be added. In this case, I'll check the prism box so we can see what it does and hit continue. You'll be prompted if you want to use the values, select yes. One thing you'll note is the thickness of the lens was increased immediately, and if you Watch the profile as I spin around. You'll see the inferior portion of the lens is much thicker than the superior portion. That's the front surface prism orientating the contact lens. So in deciding whether you're gonna use prism or not, there are a couple methods you can use. One is to look at the initial topography, and look at the alignment of the lens. So in this case, we have almost two diopters of corneal cylinder. The cylinder is very centrally located and as we move out, towards five and seven millimeters of the cornea, you'll notice there's not much torsity. So this lens will probably rotate on the eye. Another way you can tell is if you have your initial lens and you find that cylinder over refraction, and remove the lens, dot the lens, and then put it back on the eye and check that dot for stability. If the dot moves around, then you know you're gonna need prism. If the dot stays stable, then chances are you will not need prism. And finally, when it comes to the over-refraction, there are cases where we'll have subsequent over-refractions, whether it be uh, troubleshooting the lens itself, or as the years go on, we just make small adjustments. So when we click over-refraction, if we already have a value in these white boxes, we do not overwrite those. If you overwrite them, they will delete the initial over-refraction and use your new one. So in this case, if you had this particular lens, and you had a minus a quarter over-refraction, and you simply change this to say minus a quarter, pulled out the cylinder, you would lose or delete this over refraction. Rather, what you'll do is select the more button, and this will open up a new box, enter your new over refraction in here, and then hit use comp, which is the compound over refraction. And you'll notice it will change your, uh, in this case, plus a half to plus a quarter, just did the simple math there. If you had a compound uh, cylinder over refraction, it would do the math 
and replace your initial one with your new one combined with the previous over-refraction. It's also important to note that when we enter this over-refraction, I only clicked the Use Comp button once. If I click it multiple times, it will continue to add your over-refractions. So do not double-click, only click that button one time, verify that the values are what you want, and then hit Continue. In this case, I messed up and put too many values in there. So if I hit continue, it will ask me, do I want to use these values? I can simply say no. And when I hit this box, I'll be back to my original. I'll hit more, add my compound over refraction, hit use comp, confirm the values that I want, hit continue. Do I want to use these values? Yes, 